Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Hunt. Uh, we're back with our weekly show dedicated towards helping hiring managers and candidates navigate the world of recruiting. Uh, we come back every Friday to discuss insights, advice, and guidance on the hiring landscape and trends that we're seeing. Uh, for those of you who weren't here last week, my name is Kevin Roth. I'm the Director of Recruiting at Advice Personnel. Uh, we're a full-service recruiting agency serving the New York market for over 35 years. And today, I am lucky enough to be joined by Jules Ehrenberg. And aside from those of you from Brooklyn who recognize, yes, it is the Jules Ehrenberg from Sheepshead Bay High School basketball star. Uh, he is also a 30-plus year veteran in the recruiting industry and the current head of temp and staffing services at Advice Personnel. Jules, thanks so much for being on. Kevin, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me. Just want to just quickly mention uh, last week's episode. Uh, your debut with Sal Sicaccio was excellent. So uh, I hope to live up to those standards. That well, you guys we're, glad it, we're glad at least one person watched it. So that's that's good to hear. And you look great, too. Did you get a haircut? Yeah, first haircut in three months. Um, got it yesterday, actually. And uh, everyone in my family thinks I look, you know, less like Albert Einstein now. You know, you so go. it's all good. Yeah, it took me about an hour and a half to get my hair to sit down for this video show, which was tough without, without any sort of professional help. I need a haircut so badly that I had a dream about a haircut last night, which you know you're at a tough point in your haircut game when you have <clears throat> dreams that you're getting a haircut. Uh, it's really gotten to that point, but I got to hold that. You look good, Kevin. You, you, you always look good. Thank you. Thank There's you nothing to worry about. All right, well, we could talk about that all day, but we'll get back to, to this week's episode. Having Jules, who has spent the past 13 years at Advice leading our temp and staffing division, we really wanted to take time to talk about an area that a lot of people are, have preconceived notions about in, in the word temp and, and just a world that a lot are unfamiliar about, but have become, has become much more dynamic in recent years. So, you know, we'll share some insight. And, and Jules, from someone that's done this for for 30 plus years in recruiting in general. How have you seen the landscape shift and, and how that's affected sort of how people approach temp and, and how that whole world has just changed? Right, well, you know, when I first began my career actually to take a step back. So I went to college and I got my degree in accounting and you know, I began my career in public accounting. And back in the day, you know, the, the way your career was supposed to work was, you know, you would get a position in public, uh, in the accounting world, at least, uh, stay there for a few years, then transition possibly into a private company and spend the next 15, 20 years in that company. <laughs> yeah, your whole life, your whole life's laid out in front of you. Yeah, I mean, that, that, was, that, that was the way it was. And things, as the years progressed, things have changed. Things have changed significantly, especially in this kind of uh, COVID you know, um, environment that we're in, people are looking for diversity. People aren't staying in one job for their entire career. People are looking to get different experiences in their life. You know, uh, after, you know, two, three years in one company, they may be looking for other opportunities to get other experiences. And even on the flip side, companies value that. Companies back in the day used to value stability. Right. You know, and being with one organization or two organizations for most of your career. Now companies want to see people who have different experiences, who bring that to the table because they don't want to bring someone on board who they have to retrain and teach them the way they do things. You know, if they have, you know, uh, three positions in nine years, you know, they may bring experiences that that add value to their company. Yeah, and yeah, and sure. I think that, you know, uh, that's kind of the way things are right now, you know, and even, you know, I head up the temp division and I think that people value that more at the moment, you know, they value the opportunity to freelance and to experience new roles, even without being tied down to one company as an employee, but more as a freelance person or a temporary person or a consultant. You know, so I think that that's changed significantly over the years. Yeah, you know, the diversity you can get, it's a really interesting point. And I, I don't think historically people have thought about it that way. You know, when I, when I think of temp, the word temp, 
before I got into this business, because I've obviously worked with you and seen the dynamic nature of it. But when I think of the word temp, I think of like Ryan from The Office. You know, and his first few seasons, the guy needed to pick up groceries. He needed to go get Michael a special coffee from, from Starbucks or wherever. And it's like low man on the totem pole. But in terms of that definition, I, I mean, I think from what you're sharing, the freelances and people that are more dynamic than ever, people like diversity, people want to try new things. They don't want to be stuck like you were, no offense. Um, but four years into their college experience, they already know 30 years from now, this is, I'm going to be a controller. I'm going to be a CFO or I'm going to be a what, whatever it might be. So I, I think it seems like, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting take. But there is that assumption that you're like, you know, temp, if you're coming into temp work, you're, you're low man on the totem pole. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just, I think there still is that market of, of those that don't want that more traditional career path. But I think there's a larger market now, you know, of those that want that diversified kind of try new things type of thing. And I think with temp, yeah, you know, back you know, temp has that connotation like Ryan on the office, you know, the, the, the guy who gets the coffee and they, you know, he sits, he's, his office is a closet. And, you know, uh, I think that's changed significantly. I think temporary work is important. And is, it's always a sense of detoxuation. Uh, without having the temp that a company needs, you know, immediately it could affect their business. It could affect their operations. Um, and th there's so many levels of temporary work that can range from an administrative assistant, clerks, all the way up to chief financial officers. So there's a wide variety of opportunities for temporary people that really have an effect on business in general. Yeah. So when we had, we had that role where we had a position for those of you out there that are, you know, more senior or, or think of, you know, temp in a different way. We had a position with a company, an extremely progressive company, uh, on path to IPO, and they needed a really critical role at like a director of VP level. And they weren't sure it was going to be someone they were going to need forever, but they needed someone to strategically come in, train, develop, and build out this particular area for them. And they were treating it as a temp assignment because of that but they, they needed like a real sophisticated person. And we ended up speaking to people that were really impressive and they just preferred the freedom and flexibility. You knowing I could come in for three months. I love the project based nature of it, come in, attack it, build it out, and then be able to kind of move on to the next challenge. And I'm in a spot where I'm not concerned by that flexibility. I think they had a family member or a, a spouse who had benefits. So they didn't need, that component. I mean, of course, right. we still see the, you know, I'm sure a majority of your work is still the traditional temp, you know, short-term fill assignments that are more traditional and that it's full-time temp and, you know, open-ended. But there are a lot of these positions out there that I never would have thought of that are much more sophisticated. They just so happen to be temporary in nature. Um, but that's not necessarily the same word that everybody thinks it is when you think of Ryan. Yeah, and also the, the more progressive companies think like that. The more progressive companies want someone in there for a project that they could, that this person could add value to their company for that short-term stint, and then not have the overhead of keeping that person on board. Because once the project's complete and all the information that, they, uh, that they're bringing to the table is implemented, then they have what they need, and the person who was on the temporary assignment, you know, moves on to other companies where they can offer their services to those companies. So it's kind of a win-win. Yeah, no, for sure. And when, when can you see, so when people are exploring going that route, you know, a lot of you out there might be out of work right now uh, and unfortunately dealing with some tough times and you're sitting there thinking, what can I do? And you might have recruiters reaching out to you telling you, uh, listen, I have this temporal. And initially in your mind, you're thinking, I really don't want to get caught in that slippery slope. I really need something permanent, full time. I, I, I really don't want to go down the temp path. I'll hold out and wait. So Jules, with, with our audience members that are sitting there thinking about that stuff, can you give them some guidance as to when it might make sense to jump at that temp opportunity or what it might do to, to benefit them if, they, if they're sitting there battling that? Because I'm sure a lot of you out there have been tempted with that, with that route. Well, you know, my advice to people who are job hunting, who are unemployed is, you know, 
is is to if you have the opportunity to work and get back into the game, then you should get back into the game. You know, I think um, working on a temporary assignment gives you the ability. Well, getting a temporary role gives you the opportunity to get a position a lot more quickly than a permanent position. So if you're on a permanent position, or if you're on if you're on an interview for permanent for a permanent role. It could take weeks, it could take months, you know, it could take a long time to kind of get that foot in the door if you're lucky enough to get the position. On a temporary position, depending on the position, there's all levels of temporary roles. You know, it could take one interview, sometimes it could say uh, the next day you start and your interview is kind of the, you know, you working there, you know, and they, they see what you bring to the table and how you perform. So the ability to kind of get into a company uh, is just a lot quicker you know, and you can start working and earn money. And, you know, earning money is a big part of um, the process because, listen, you, you're, you have to pay bills, you're unemployed, let's say you're not receiving unemployment any longer, let's say you quit your position, not, you're, not eligible for, you're, you're not eligible for unemployment, you need to pay bills. But sometimes when you're, on a temp assignment, you continue the permanent job interview process. And you're employed. You may take a position, you may end up taking a permanent position that you're not necessarily happy about, but you're taking it because you feel that you need to pay the bills. You, there's this pressure that you have to deal with. Uh, yeah. when, you're, when you're on a temporary assignment, at the least you're getting a weekly paycheck that gives you a much more objective viewpoint when you're on an interview you can make that decision listen i'm making money i like my temp assignment i'm, I'm enjoying what i'm doing but do i really want to take this position that i'm not really that happy about it gives you a little bit more leverage a little bit yeah, more flexibility bridges, bridges in making decisions like right it gives you that bridge and that lifeline to, to buy time and to wait yeah. for the right thing it's like going to the grocery store. You ever, you ever go to the grocery store when you're starving and you're so yeah. hungry and you end up getting to the checkout counter and it's three times what you normally spend. And you're like, what did I get? And you get home and you're unpacking and you got like these peanut butter and mint cookies that you don't oh, even yeah. like peanut butter. And, but you were so hungry at the time that you, you kind of felt you needed it because that pressure in your mind was to get as much food as you can. Right. So not to compare anybody's situation to, to grocery shopping, but realistically, that's, that's what you're saying. It's like, if you have that burden on you, you're subconsciously going to make decisions that aren't as objective as you want them to be. Right. And you bring in an right. interesting point about getting your foot in the door also. I, I, had, I had someone tell me yesterday that they had gone on several rounds of interviews uh, over the course of a month, did a case study that they spent 18 hours on. 18 hours on a case study only to find out eventually that the role got put on hold and they're out of work. So when you think about the opportunity to, to get in quickly and bypass that interview process that drives everyone crazy, if it's really something you believe in just to get going, you know, I, I'd be one that would, that would take advantage of that. And I think it's something that a lot of people have taken advantage of, especially to what you described with the world changing. People want different experiences. People want diversity. You see people that are working from all across the world, all across the country, people working remotely. Um, diversity and uncertainty has become king versus, like you said, I, you know, I wasn't in the recruiting world you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, but I know of those people that, that came up and spent 30 years at one job and one company. Those, those days are gone. And these routes, it's interesting to see this, the attractiveness and the positive association with diversity nowadays in so many senses of the word versus where we were 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, it's, it's, it's changed. It's absolutely changed. And uh, I think it's changed for the better. I think that you may have had people who work in one company or two companies in their career and may not have been that happy, you know, kind of, you know, they like the stability of it, but did, did they fulfill their passion in what they may have wanted to, yeah. you know, you know, do in their life, and I think that you have uh, 
you have people now who are looking more inwardly as to what they want to do as opposed to kind of appeasing uh, you know, the kind of industry standard of working. Rate, the rat um, race or, you yeah. know, whatever the, the industry yeah. norms are. Yeah. That's empowering stuff. Anybody that's out there that's watching this, that's, that's sitting there and has always, you spent the last five, seven, eight, ten 10 years, 20 years, 30 years doing something you never truly loved. And you got, you're unemployed or you're, you're still thinking about making a move. And you always wanted to try something different. This is a, a perfect opportunity to take that leap of faith, try something different, and there's no commitment. Tech provides that, which is very, very cool to think about. It's never too late to try something new and going that route. You know, when people hire temps, they rely more on, do they have the skill set? Do they, they have the right attitude? All right, let's give them a shot. Versus permanent, where it's like, have they done this before? Let's have them meet 15 members of the team. Let's go through 16 case studies. Let's uh, do references. Let's do, I've seen Jules, I've seen you. I always laugh and I make fun of you a little bit, but I could never do what you do because you have companies that call you. I have companies that call me and say, Kevin, we have an urgent hire. Uh, we want to hire this person and you know, we got to get them on board within three months. So we got to rush and really find people. And then I hear you on the phone and someone calls you and says, Jules, I just need someone good, smart, who wants to do this. I, I need them to start tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the sense of urgency is really, I mean, I executed for seven years. Uh, and I placed people in, in a variety of industries, including physicians, you know, marketing people, technology folks. And this is a different animal, you know, the, because the companies, call me when they really have to have someone on board you know it's 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 an emergency and without having that person there it really as i said before it could affect their business you know and they must have it done uh and uh, like you mentioned also kevin you know this also gives people an opportunity you know if they want to try 10 positions let's say and, and i would only recommend trying a temporary position if you're not working i wouldn't leave my job to you know venture into the you know temp world unless you're looking to kind of create your own freelance type of business i mean that's possible but for temporary roles you know it's the the opportunity to get into different industries is very different from working on the permanent side permanent side you're working in an organization you're working in real estate you feel ah, i'd like to try something else and experience a different industry very difficult to do for permanent roles because they're looking for someone who understands culture of the industry, understands the challenges of the industry, the language, the systems. Temporary positions offer the opportunity. There's so much more flexibility because companies, because of the sense of urgency, they're open to different people that bring the skill set, the transferable skills that would be that that this that that role may uh, uh, have that you don't need to have the industry experience and then you get these people get opportunities to you know experience other industries that's huge and not to cut you off but flipping that around also for the hiring managers that are watching us right now and hiring managers that are listening people in hiring positions going this route the same way it gives a candidate a chance at diversifying their experience maybe finding a passion they never knew they had and finding a niche they never knew they were meant for it removes the bias and gives a hiring manager a chance to make a hire and find a diamond in the rough that they never would have considered if it were a permanent position. This, these resumes might have never made it through to them. They never would have made it through the process, but you're trusting your gut. You're going off a quick instinct. Human nature tells us we like to be able to read people and you might get employees in there who you never would have considered previously, but it ended up being the hardest workers, most loyal, dedicated, passionate people that fall in love with the role and you fall in love with them and you never would have considered them otherwise. And I'm yeah, sure they, 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 also bring, they also bring fresh ideas to the table possibly. I used to work, you know, prior to working in advice, I worked in another organization where uh, I worked for one of the major hotel chains. I, one of our clients was a major hotel chain. And they always felt that, and this was in their marketing department, and they, their kind of philosophy was never to hire people who have marketing experience within the hotel industry. Always look outside the hotel industry. Always look for the most creative 
you know, marketing people in the country or the creative industries that they come from because they wanted fresh ideas. They didn't want the stale hotel, typical marketing right. jargon right. that was, that, you know, and they wanted people who understood what affects people, not what affects, you know, what, what the standard marketing, uh, uh, t- typical marketing campaigns were. So that's kind of what we're talking about. You know, companies may appreciate people who come from different industries. And many times when they, uh, when they hire people with temporary experience or who are looking for a temporary role, they will get that. And they could be pleasantly surprised just to, to get that kind of refreshing, you know, I, I, idea, you know, from someone who's coming from a different industry. Yeah, and again, who never would have got, who never would have gotten a shot otherwise. So, some really insightful and hopefully energizing insight for people out there who are considering this route. Try something new. Get out there. You ever thought you had a passion in something else? To Jules's point, don't leave a gainfully employed position to start. Um, experimenting unless you really have the luxury of being able to comfortably do it but if you're in that position whether you're on the hiring side or a candidate get out there try something different give yourself a shot to find something you never thought you would have fallen in love with or give yourself a shot to find somebody that you never would have otherwise considered and you never know where that journey could take you and I'm sure we could share stories for hours but not sure how many people would listen to us on a Friday here if we if we go on for that amount of time but Jules, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Uh, for those people out there, for those of you listening who really took something away from this, but, but really want more, we're going to leave you wanting more, but reach out to Jules. He's tagged on this post, connect with him, send him a message, reach out to him, and you know, he'll be happy to give you any advice, guidance you can. If you're exploring going this route or hiring in this way, reach out to him. He's 30 plus years in the industry and would love the chance to, to let you pick his brain and see where it goes. But Jules, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, really awesome getting to spend time with you, especially we don't get to see each other too much anymore. Yeah, it's been my, my pleasure, Kevin. You know, great talking to you as, as always. Uh, and yeah, as Kevin mentioned, you know, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Questions that you may have about careers, uh, I'm definitely there for you. So uh, great, great to talk to you again. All right, good. So we'll, we'll catch up soon, Jules. But everyone else watching, uh, follow us on LinkedIn, Advice and Why. Uh, make sure you check out our page for new content. Uh, like and share this post and check in every Friday for a brand new episode of The Hunt. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy the weekend and we'll see everybody next Friday. Thanks for tuning in. So long.